Assalamu alaikum. Hello, kids. How are you today? Are you enjoying our videos? <laughs> I know you are. I hope you are learning a lot from our videos as well. Inshallah, today I am going to tell you the story about Zemzem and a few others. Now, listen carefully. In the last episode, we saw that Prophet Ibrahim السلام, left his wife and son in the middle of a desert. The Prophet did so as commanded by God. The place where he had left them was called Al Marwa, and it was so barren that there was no vegetation and no water anywhere in sight. In a few hours, the food and water that Hajar radiallahu anha had in reserve got over. The baby soon got thirsty and started to cry. She ran to a hill close by called Al Marwa, hoping to find somebody. She stood there and looked around, but she saw no one. Then she ran to the next mountain called Al Safa hoping to find someone from there. But she couldn't find anyone from there either. Then she ran back to the top of Al Marwa, then again to Al Safa. She kept running between these mountains seven times. By the time she climbed Al Marwa for the last time, she was very tired. It was then that she heard a voice. She kept quiet and waited to hear the voice again. When she heard the voice for the second time, she said, Oh, whoever you might be, you have made me hear your voice. Have you got something to help me? It was then that she saw an angel. The angel was digging the earth. The angel kept digging till water flowed from it. It was a miracle. When she saw the water, she ran toward it and placed some stones around it to build a basin. This place where the water rose is called Zamzam. Hajar radiallahu anha didn't go anywhere else and stayed at Zamzam. Many days had passed. One day, a few people were traveling through Mecca when they saw the birds flying around Al Marwa. They knew the birds were there because of the water. The men were surprised to find a woman there. She was holding a baby too. Shall we stay here and use this water please? They asked her. Hajar agreed and they drank water from the Zamzam. Many others arrived at Al Marwa, and some of them eventually settled down there. In a few years, the whole valley came alive, with people from different cities living there now. Hajar and her child were not alone any longer. In the meantime, Ismail alayhi salam grew up. He learned Arabic from the travelers. People loved and respected him for his qualities. He kept thinking about his father and knew that his father will come back someday. Ismail then married a local woman and lived his life in peace. Prophet Ibrahim السلام, was missing his son very badly now. It had been years since he saw Ismail. One day, he decided to go to Mecca to meet his wife and son. He traveled for many days and finally arrived at Al Marwa. The Prophet was quite surprised when he saw all the activity at Al Marwa. Last time he was here, there was not even a single soul living on this mountain. He knew it was all because of God and thanked him. But by the time he arrived, it was very late. 
people told him that Hajar had died some time ago. The Prophet was very sad to hear this. And then the local people told the Prophet that his son Ismail was still alive. The Prophet was very happy to hear this. When Ismail heard the news that his father was back in town, he ran toward him. He could not believe his eyes. He was waiting to see him for so long. He hugged his father and he started crying. It was a happy time for both father and son. But the happiness didn't last for long. One day, God decided to test Ibrahim. One night, when the Prophet was sleeping, he saw a dream. In his dream, the Prophet saw himself killing his son as a sacrifice. When the Prophet woke up in the morning, he ignored it, thinking it was just a dream. But the next night, he saw the same dream again. This time, he realized that this was not just an ordinary dream. It was Allah asking him to sacrifice his own son. The Prophet went to his son and told him about the dream. Ismail understood that it was an order from Allah. He was a man of faith and realized that he has to comply. Do what Allah has asked you to, he told his father. The next day, the Prophet took a rope and a knife and set out for Mount Arafat, along with his son. Upon reaching the top of the mountain, Ismail asked his father to tie his hands and legs so that he may not struggle during the sacrifice. The Prophet obliged and tied his hands and legs. Then he blindfolded himself so that he won't have to watch his son suffer. Then he raised his knife for the sacrifice. But then, suddenly, he heard a voice. The voice asked him to stop the sacrifice and told him that this was just a test. The Prophet was relieved. His son was going to be alive. They hugged each other and cried tears of joy for they had just passed a difficult test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ismail alayhi salam joined his father in preaching to the people. They spoke about Allah and called people to Islam. One day, Allah ordered the Prophet to build a house for worship. The Prophet told his son that Allah had ordered him to build the Kaaba. And Ismail replied, Do what your God has ordered you to do. They soon started building the foundation of the Kaaba. Ismail السلام, helped by carrying the stones while Prophet Ibrahim السلام, built the house. When the walls got tall, Ibrahim السلام, could not reach the top. So, Ismail السلام, brought a large stone for the Prophet to stand on. The stone was called Maqam Ibrahim and can still be seen today. The foundation was soon completed, but there was a gap left in the corner. Ibrahim السلام, asked his son to find a stone to fill in the corner. I feel tired, he said to his father. But when the old prophet insisted, Ismail went searching for a stone. When he left, Ibrahim sat there waiting for the stone. But then a miracle happened. An angel flew down from heaven carrying a stone. The angel told him that this stone was brought to earth by Adam السلام, from paradise. The stone was originally white, but because of the sins committed by the people on earth, its color gradually turned into black. Ismail returned after some time, and when he saw the stone, he was surprised and asked his father where it came from. It was brought by someone 
who never gets tired, replied Ibrahim. They had finally finished building the Kaaba. They prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their work. Allah was very happy with the Prophet and his son for spreading his message and proclaimed the pilgrimage among men. They will come to thee on foot and on every kind of camel, lean an account of journeys through deep and distant mountain highways. Many years had passed. The Prophet had grown old by now. One day, he was sitting outside his house and saw three men coming towards his house. The three men were actually angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet welcomed them inside to have food. The strangers went in and sat down for food. The Prophet served them a roasted calf, but the strangers did not touch the food at all. The Prophet started to fear. Then the angels comforted the Prophet and asked him not to fear at all. They told him that they were actually the angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They informed him that they came to his house to deliver news. They said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to give them a son and that he should name him Ishaq. They also told him that his son would be a prophet. Sara overheard this and she could not believe her ears. She was so old now and how could she have a child at this age, she thought. Then the angel said that all things are possible with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was true. Soon, Sarah got pregnant and gave birth to a child. The Prophet named him Ishaq, just as the angels told him. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam lived for 170 years. He lived a life full of trials, but he had a strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the next episode, I will tell you the story of Prophet Lut alayhi salam, the nephew of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Keep watching our channel. If you like the video, don't forget to click that subscribe button and stay updated on all our videos. Please tell your friends about the channel as well. That's all for today. Goodbye.